made it all the way from Campbell River where I started this morning and just landed in Kamloops where I'm getting some gas. Still feeling good, so I think I'm gonna grab a quick coffee. We still have quite a bit of daylight left, so I'll probably find just a rest area or something along the way. No idea exactly which town I'm gonna to sleep. I don't have a campsite or anything reserved, so we're just gonna drive and see what we find. But overall, everything's going really well so far. The car is holding up just fine. The weather is beautiful. We just drove the Coquihalla Highway and that was just phenomenal. I totally forgot how beautiful of a drive that was. I'm heading back for a couple weeks to see some family. It's gonna be a great little reunion and really looking forward to it. So hopefully everything keeps going to plan. We will keep on moving and check in in a little bit. Well, gas is getting cheaper, so that's always good. Thank you. Have a good night. Turn right onto Copperhead Drive, then use the right lane to take the Trans Canada Highway East Ramp. On the road again. a little loud tonight but it's pretty dark out and I'm tired so not a good idea to keep driving I'm also really hoping I can make this mattress fit all right the dark is starting to scare me a little bit I totally forgot this little lip piece at the back here has three screws. Thank God I brought my multi-tool to take those out. Otherwise it would have been a very uncomfortable sleep back here. Still might be to be honest. Covered a lot of ground today. Just outside of salmon arm hunker down at a little rest stop yeah covered a lot of ground today got seven hours seven of hours of driving in we're gonna get up at a good time hopefully catch sunrise as we drive through revelstoke and then we're gonna get to bamp tomorrow fingers crossed as long as everything goes well but yeah we are gonna get to bed see you guys in the morning good first day of driving Morning. That was actually pretty comfy. It's starting to get loud out there again. I thought maybe I'd slept in a little bit because it was already so bright out. And I looked at my phone, it was only 5.30. Got my spare tire <laughs> beside me. I was just able to cram in the mattress right in the middle. Lots of mountain driving left, so I'm trying not to rush through things, even though I've said we're trying to cover as much ground as we can. Regardless, you take in all the views as much as you can. 
never really gets old going through the mountains no matter how many times you do it it's always just as incredible as it was the first time anyways we're gonna finish up this cup of coffee here and then get back on the road added that crack to the collection a couple weeks ago Well, that was a bust and I really should have known better. It's a Saturday afternoon in downtown Banff. I thought we would get out and go stretch our legs a little bit, but not here. So we're beelining it back for the Trans Canada. <laughs> they even have a parking lot designated for the Banff sign when you come into town. And there's a lineup of people waiting to get their picture in front of the Banff sign. And I mean, we're guilty of getting our pictures taken with a couple signs here and there. Regardless, there's a reason it's really busy in towns like Banff and Jasper. They're huge touristy towns, but it's for a good reason. They're awesome places to visit. There's lots of cool stuff to do. And sadly, this will be the last little bit of mountain scenery that we have because after that we'll hit Calgary and then everything really starts to flatten out after that. We've got a long haul ahead. We've put a lot of kilometers on so far and things are going really well. But yes, still a lot of hours and kilometers left so let's do it. Hang on, I might have lied. There's still Canmore before we leave the mountain so maybe we'll stop there if it's a little less busy. bit of mountains. Bye mountains. Oh, that rain really picked up. 
There's a couple little close calls there. I hydroplaned a few too many times, so I figured I'd come into this little rest area here and wait it out. There's a good thunderstorm happening right now, so almost debating just crashing here. started just outside of Salmon Arm, BC, and we are currently just outside of Swift Current, Saskatchewan. So all in all, about 10 hours of driving. Big haul, big haul today. Found this pretty nice little rest area off the highway. Kind of tucked away in some trees here. Some bathrooms and whatnot, but I'm the only one here, so should be nice and quiet tonight with a little bit of road noise, a little bit of trucks going by. The sound of the trucks kind of lulls you to sleep after a certain point. Another big day tomorrow, hoping to make it to Ontario. Looked at the map, it should be just over 10 hours to get to Kenora. So that's probably where I'll stop tomorrow. That's the plan at least. But yeah, we're gonna, a little bit of daylight left, so I'm just gonna hunker down, probably watch a little bit of YouTube and Drift off to the sound of the trucks. See you in the morning. See, I told you the prairies could be beautiful. Really nice morning here. Had a pretty good sleep. I think I uh, didn't take enough time yesterday to drink enough water. So I'm waking up feeling a little dehydrated today, but I already feel a little bit better after guzzling some water. So I think we're just gonna pack up real quick and then just start going. The sun's up. It's a really nice sunrise. So I'll stop in Swift Current, which is going to be the next bigger town, I guess. So I'll grab some coffee, grab some breakfast, and then another full day of driving. Won't be as picturesque as it was yesterday. We had the mountains to come through into Alberta, and we got a little, bit, little taste of the prairies yesterday, and that is pretty much what we will be in for today. So goal is to get to Ontario. Just checking out iOverlander and saw a little camp spot just in Kenora that's the first town once we get into Ontario so I'm gonna try my best see how far we get today and still just enjoy the ride yeah we're rushing and knocking off kilometers but it doesn't mean we don't have to enjoy it right so let's gonna move on I'm also really excited to get to Ontario because 
pretty much everywhere you look there's lakes and I can jump in and take a bath finally. Starting to feel a little greasy. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's go guys. made it to the sign. For anyone that's ever been through Canada, you know how big Ontario is, so you know we still have lots of driving left, but nonetheless, still a big accomplishment. Making it across the country into Ontario, it's lots of driving. We put a whole bunch of kilometers in today. So from where we started this morning to where we are now, we clocked in just under 1,100 kilometers driving through Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and now into Ontario. Didn't really check in much today. There wasn't a whole lot to show you guys. The prairies, like I was saying, can be beautiful, but it is long. It's well over 15 hours of pretty much the same scenery the whole time. It's okay at first, and then it becomes a bit mind-numbing. So that's over now. The trees are back. We get to see the Canadian Shield and the thousands of lakes that we're going to cross within the next... Oh. Hear that thunder? I got some massive rain clouds above me right now. And I've seen a couple lightning straights already. So as soon as I got out of the car, I got swarmed by mosquitoes. So that, that's how you know you're home. That's the real indicator. Here we go. We're just outside of Kenora, parked up at a little lake here. Perfect timing because I ran out of water. And so I will filter some in the morning so I can have coffee and get back on the road. I checked Google Maps just to see how much there is left. And as far as we've come the last three days, full three days of driving, there's still 21, 20, 21 hours before I get to St. Catharines, Ontario. It's all right, we're out of the prairies and the views will be stimulating again for tomorrow's drive. So yeah, today was long, 12-ish hours, 12 hours of driving. Doing good, having fun out on the open road. So I have a feeling as soon as I rest my head on the pillow, I will probably fall asleep. So we will see you guys in the morning. Need some water. Need some water. Get to see Lake Superior today, so that's exciting. I love that drive along Lake Superior. Pretty much as soon as we get to Thunder Bay, we'll drive along the coast of Superior down into Sault Ste. Marie, so it's several hours. It's a massive lake. You look out into it and you almost feel like you're looking at the ocean. It's pretty incredible. The sun's out, we got a nice day, so no time like the present.
finally able to pick up some groceries here at Walmart. We're in Dryden, Ontario, covering some ground this morning, feeling awfully tired. It's a gray, gloomy day. The sun was out for a little bit, but regardless, I have some food, some real food, some fruits and vegetables. I've never been more excited in my life to eat apples, so that just goes to show three days being on the road and eating nothing but, you know, Tim Hortons and McDonald's, whatever else is just easily accessible. So thankfully I have some good food to eat. However, there is a Tim Hortons across the street and being a creature of habit, it's just necessary to get your coffee and breakfast sandwich in the morning. So I still may have to go and stop at Tim Hortons regardless, but at least I won't have to stop at Timmy's again for lunch and dinner like I did yesterday. And let me tell you, when you go through the Tim Hortons catalog, couple times in a couple days it's uh, it gets old pretty quick so anyhow we're gonna go grab our coffee get something to eat and keep on driving wow that's amazing Hi, sir. morning yep that's everything thank you thank you have a good day Breakfast of Champions. I'm gonna go have lunch with my friend Terry. We are in the home stretch and it's been an awesome trip so far. There was a huge amount of just anticipation before embarking on this trip. If you guys have followed along on some of our past journeys, we've crossed Canada a couple times, Alana and I, and every time we've got to where we want to go, but this SUV has given us troubles a few times. And given we have put it through the ringer, went up to the Arctic last summer and we beat it up on logging roads on Vancouver Island. But every time it's, uh, it comes through. And so far on this trip, it's done awesome. For a solo trip, it's been very freeing. You just, you don't think about all the little things that you think of at home, about work and just other stuff that you don't need to think about. You think of, where am I gonna sleep tonight? Where's the next gas station? Where will I get water? The bare essentials and that's, I think that's, important to just not have to worry about so many things at once and I'm rambling on but for now just gonna relax have a beer and uh, just enjoy it taking a little trip down memory lane here. If you guys have been watching from the beginning, you'll have seen this spot before. This is the first spot we camped at along the Trans Canada when we left for our trip last summer. Just this little spot tucked away off the main road, but it's got this really awesome view and a nice fire pit just overlooking Lake Superior, like right on the beach. And yeah, we had like a little camp out, cook out, get a big nostalgia kick by doing these stops. And I do, 
still really need to take a bath and Lake Superior never really gets warm. It's actually really always cold. It's only like 11 degrees right now. I feel like it needs to be done. I feel like I shouldn't be going and visiting loved ones in the state that I'm in. So probably should take a bath first. And just look at the water too. It's crystal clear if you look at the shore there. You wouldn't have done it either. Right. That's why they were trying to limit it and slice the 